Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So in this video we're going to be building a small tank for baby vampire crabs. So this isn't going to be suitable for adult crabs, but it's going to be perfect for babies. So we'll jump straight into the video. So this is going to be a really cheap build. This one here cost me about $3. I did have some of the equipment, but you don't need any of this fancy stuff. So all you need is a tank. Three to five gallons works best, though if you're really desperate you can use a small container. Next, a low wattage light, just something cheap. If you don't have a light, you can use natural light. Just don't put your tank in the sun, direct sunlight. Other than that, we're going to use some sand, small grain stuff, so some sand or gravel. Don't use the clay balls or the lica. The little crabs will get inside that and it becomes a nightmare. Sand or small gravel works best. For the hardscape, we're just going to use some rocks, sticks and wood. So anything you've got lying around, you can take some stuff out of your primary tank if you need to. And for the details, we're just going to use some dead leaves and again some sticks. The other thing I don't have on this list, which I'll get to at the end, is springtails. Springtails are a necessity, but we'll cover that in some more detail further down. So let's get started. So the tank I'm using for this build is 30 centimeters by 20 by 20. I'll leave the imperial measurements on the screen. It's about three gallons. As I said earlier, you can use any sort of a small container or anything. It, they're not really that demanding when they're small. So you can get away with a Tupperware container, a little bucket, whatever you need. Just follow this instructions for the base design of your tank. This is a little bit more fancy than it needs to be. So you can just follow the exact same process with whatever you've got lying around just to save yourself some money. Because ultimately you're just trying to prevent your baby crabs being cannibalized by the adults. You can also use a tank like this for a little hospital tank. So if you have vampire crabs that are fighting, you can have a small tank like this just to separate one of the injured crabs or one of the crabs that's being a bully until you can find out something else to do in the situation. So for this build here, we're just putting in a nice little stack of rocks. These are just basically free rocks I got from an old dried up stream near my house. And the aim is to separate the water section, which will be on the left, with the primary land section, which is going to be on the right. Now, we're not following the golden rule of 80% land and 20% water, because these crabs, being babies, they spend a lot more time on the water. So to have a little bit more water for a build like this is a good idea. As you can see, it's probably about 60-40, which works perfectly fine. So that's the base of our structure completed, and I'll show you why I've put so many rocks on the far right-hand side. They're basically to fill a void so we don't use so much sand, but we'll get to that in a second. Moving on to the next part of the process, we're just going to fill the entire thing with sand. So as you can see, I put a lot of extra rocks in there so I don't use so much sand. This bag is two kilos of small fine sand, almost like beach sand. And we're using this instead of lacquer or the clay balls because the crabs being so tiny, they can get up inside that stuff and sometimes they get stuck and drown. So with the sand, there's no really small places for them to get stuck in and we can avoid that issue entirely. This process is pretty straightforward. If you've made a vampire crab paludarium or a paludarium in general, you know what you need to do. So just make sure you build up the sand high enough to have at least a one centimeter gap when your soil sits on top. So you don't want your soil sitting in the water. So having a little bit of a space for the water to drain through from the top layer down into the bottom section works really well. Outside of that, there's not much else to this process. So now that we've got the base in, the next thing we need to add is a little bit of a barrier to keep the soil out of the sand. So I'm doing this primarily just to stop the mixing if I want to reuse the sand at a later stage. However, it also has the added advantage of keeping the soil from going completely through the sand. 
This stuff here that I'm using is just weed matting. You can pick this up from pretty much any gardenware store. People also use window screen and some other stuff. However, all you need to do is put this down, build up the edge where the water is going to meet, just like I'm doing right here. And that will keep the soil from sliding over across into the water section. When you've got adult crabs, you need to pay more attention to this because they do move stuff around and the soil does end up in the water. So make sure you do a really good barrier for adults. However, for baby crabs, we don't need to worry too much. Once they get bigger, we'll just move them into the main tank. So for now, this is perfectly fine. Again, be creative with this and see how you go. Create whatever you like. Simpler the better. However, for this video, I am trying to make it as fancy as possible. So now that the entire base is done, we've got our detail stones in, we can add the soil. So for this, use any sort of organic potting soil. This works the best, it's also easy. Again, if you wanna get some soil out of your primary tank, that's also a good idea. You can use pretty much any other soil mix you find online for terrarium builds, any of that sort of stuff. Just make sure you don't have any fertilizers or anything in that. Whatever soil you use is pretty much fine. It's not gonna be a heavily planted tank with any plants, just makes things a lot easier when you're trying to keep the babies easily accessible. So in that regard, you'll see a little bit further on, we're gonna be doing a primarily moss build. So that's ideal for the baby crabs. But again, we'll cover that a little bit further on in the video. Moving on to the hardscape, the most important thing here is to keep it nice and simple. So if you need to get your crabs in and out, you don't want to be digging for them, looking for them everywhere. So keep it as simple as possible. Some wood and some moss and some rocks is about all you need. For this, I've got one piece of wood with some moss growing on it. So I found this in the forest. Looks really good and it's nice and simple. However, you could go even more simple if you know you're going to be moving these crabs around because even with this piece of wood, it is aged, so they're gonna find little places to hide in there. So they might be difficult to find. So definitely keep that in mind if you want a really, really simple build just to keep an eye on the baby crabs. However, I do want something that looks kind of good, so I've gone a little bit more complicated than necessary. Moving on to the section for planting and adding moss. This is one of the most important parts of the build. So these baby crabs love moss. So moss is pretty much an essential part. The same for dead leaves. So get as much moss and dead leaves in there as possible. This is more important than hardscape. So if you don't wanna go and get any sticks or rocks or anything, moss and leaves are the way to go. They're also really cheap and in a lot of cases free. So definitely put a lot of effort into this. It will keep your survival rates nice and high. There's plenty of places for little crabs to hide. Plus it looks really good. It's also super low maintenance. So I would avoid putting any plants in your little hospital tank, baby vampire crab tank, and just stick to as much moss as possible. Same for aquatic moss, if you have some. I'm not gonna be putting that in this tank at the moment because I don't have any available that doesn't have any hair algae in it. So I'm gonna avoid that. However, I will add some in a little bit later on down the track when I get some more access to some aquatic mosses.
The next part of the process and one of the final parts is to add some water. Normal tap water that's dechlorinated works fine. Just make sure you stick to the usual parameters for keeping these crabs. If you're not 100% sure on what that is, I've got a video linked in the description. You can check that one out. It covers everything you need to know. You can also use water from your original tank. This is preferred if you have the option. If you can't drain the water out, just use some fresh water. It doesn't really matter too much. However, if you want to sort of help things move along and help the tank establish quicker, this is the way to go. Not necessary, but definitely will give you a bit of an advantage if you decide to go down this path. Another really important thing for your water section is to add some floating plants. These crabs love to eat them. My primary option is salvinia. Easy to find, not as crazy as duckweed, doesn't grow as fast, and I have seen the crabs eat this stuff all the time. So if you're going away for a while, you don't have an option to feed your tank too heavily, this is one of the best ways to keep them fed with springtails as well. So salvinia and springtails, one of the best ways to have a nice holiday and keep your tank fed. So the final and probably most important thing for this entire build is springtails. So this is one of the primary foods your baby crabs will eat, so you need to make sure your tank is heavily stocked with them. If you've already got a tank set up, just pinch a few from your main tank, get as many in there as possible and get the colony to explode. So you might need to feed your tank some fish food, some old vegetables, whatever, just to get them breeding as fast as possible. Because this will be the main thing they're going to eat and it'll save you a lot of time preparing food and all sorts of other stuff. They also keep the ecosystem really clean. Don't add any isopods into your tank. They can be bigger than the baby crabs sometimes and these crabs molt a lot and it is possible for the isopods to actually eat the crabs when they're freshly molted. Anyway, that wraps up this guide. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you enjoy the cinematic. Thank you.